the calculus of animation. Fractals. 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 What is infinity? A limit is the value that a function or sequence approaches as the input or index approaches some value. Limits, limits are essential to calculus, calculus and are used to define continuity, continuity derivatives, derivatives, and integrals. And integrals. Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan, Lohan is, is wrong. wrong. A limit also represents the formal definition of the derivative, 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 derivative dy, dy, dx. Tell me, Tell me class, class, what, what do, you do you see? see? A, rainbow? A rainbow? A bar, A bar graph? graph? What about, what about this? this? There are many methods to approximate curves. Riemann sums, sums trapezoidal rule. rule. The greater the n value, the closer the approximation is. But what if n approaches infinity? Q transition into animation. So here are some characters uh, from some of our early films. Finding Nemo, uh, Monsters in Inc., and uh, Toy Story 2. Anybody know who the blue character in the upper left is? Dory. It's Dory. Okay, that was easy. Here's a little harder one. Anybody know who the character in the lower right? Al McWiggin. Al McWiggin from Al's Toy Barn, exactly. The thing to notice about these characters is they're really complicated. Those shapes are really complicated. Um, in fact, the toy cleaner, uh, I have an example. The toy cleaner there in the middle, uh, here's his hand. You can imagine how fun it was to bring this through airport security. No. <laughs> uh, his hand is a really complicated shape. It's not just a bunch of spheres and cylinders stuck together, right? And not only is it, is it complicated, but it has to move in complicated ways. So I'd like to tell you how we do that. And to do that, I need to tell you about midpoints. So here's a couple of points, A and B, and the line segment between them. We're going to start out first in two dimensions. The midpoint, M, is the point that splits that line segment in the middle. Hmm. Anyone else thinking about midpoint, midpoint approximation? Huh. Right? So that's the geometry. And introduction to calculus. calculus. To make equations and numbers, we again introduce a coordinate system. And if we know the coordinates of A and B, we can easily compute the coordinates of M just by averaging. You now know enough to work at Pixar. All right, guys. Let's all go work at Pixar. Pixar. Let me show you. So I'm going to do something slightly terrifying and uh, move to a live demo here. Uh, so what I have is a, uh, a four-point polygon here, and it's going to be my job to make a smooth curve out of this thing. Making a smooth curve out of lines? That sounds like a perfect application of calculus. And I'm going to do it just using the idea of midpoints. So the first thing I'm going to do is an operation I'll call split, which adds midpoints to all those edges. So I went from four points to eight points. But it's no smoother. I'm going to make it a little bit smoother by moving all of these points from where they are now to the midpoint of their clockwise neighbor. So let me animate that for you. I'm going to call that the averaging step. So now I've got eight points. They're a little bit smoother. My job is to make a smooth curve. So what do I do? Do it again. Split and average. So now I've got 16 points. As he continues this process, he is steadily increasing the value of n. n. As he increases the value of n, he creates a smoother curve. curve. To create a perfect curve, curve, curve. n must reach infinity. infinity. This, my friends, is calculus, calculus in action. I'm going to put those two steps, split and average, together into something I'll call subdivide, which just means split and then average. So now I've got 32 points. Wow. Wow. If that's not smooth enough, I'll do more. I'll get 64 points. Wow. Do you see a smooth curve appearing here from those original points? Yes. yes. And that's how we create the shapes uh, of our characters. But remember, I said a moment ago, it's not enough just to know the static shape, the, the fixed shape, we need to animate it. And to animate these curves, the cool thing about subdivision, did you see the aliens in uh, Toy Story? Yes. yes. You know that sound they make? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ready? So the way we animate these curves is simply by animating the original four points. Ooh. All right. Well, I, I think that's pretty cool, and uh, if you don't, the door is there. It doesn't get any better than that, so. Leave if you must. Uh, this idea of splitting and averaging also holds for surfaces. This may be multivariable calculus, but we're, we're going to learn, learn it learn anyway. anyway. Ooh. Uh, so I'll split, and I'll average, 
Mm. We'll split and I'll average, mm. put those together into subdivide, and this is how we actually create the shapes of all of our surface characters in three dimensions. Mm. N grows closer to an infinity, infinity each time animators use subdivision, subdivision, further creating rounded images and nice, nice approximations. Mm. So this idea of subdivision was first used in a short film in 1997 called Jerry's Game, uh, and Jerry actually made a cameo appearance in Toy Story 2 as the toy cleaner. Each of his hands was uh, the first time we ever used subdivision. So each hand was a subdivision surface. His face was a subdivision surface. So was his jacket. Here's Jerry's hand before subdivision. And here's Jerry's hand after subdivision. So subdivision just goes in and smooths out all those facets and creates the beautiful uh, surfaces that you see on the screen in the, in the theaters. Since that time, we've built all of our characters this way. So here's Merida, uh, the lead character from Brave. Her dress was a subdivision surface, her hands, her face, the faces and hands of all the clansmen were subdivision surfaces. And today we've seen how addition, multiplication, trigonometry, and geometry play a role in our films. Uh, given a little more time, I could show you how linear algebra, uh, differential calculus, integral calculus also play a role. All the math that you're learning uh, in high school and actually up through sophomore college, we use all the time, every day, at Pixar. Thanks. Hopefully this video has shown you how integral, integral calculus is in everyday life. Some may view calculus as just yes, math, yes. but now you can see how beautiful it can truly be. Piecewise, to parametrics, to approximations and subdivision, calculus has helped us to create some pretty amazing images. Thank you Isaac Newton and others. Thank you Mr. Epstein. May we always strive to approach infinity and beyond!